every mom knows to be. Shake it on the other. And the yonder push and the yonder go shake it on the other. Under the yonder push and the other. Baba Shaka, the yonder. Under the yonder. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah. Christ is. One more time, Christ is Christ. can be seated. Amen. Amen. This is Christmas Sunday at Dove Church, and we welcome you wherever you listen to us from and on your devices, and we thank you for sharing this time with us, and for those in-person worships, we just thank God for you. He is worthy to be praised today. He is worthy to be praised. He is Lord. No matter whatever else you do, it's all about Jesus. It's about Jesus and what he's done, what he did, and what he continues to do. How many glad about that today? He's a high priest and our intercessor, and he's coming back as Lord of Lords and Kings of Kings. And we thank Him. We just bless you today and thank God for you. And today we have a what I call a special treat. It's always special when the children of the house come forward. Those that have been ordained to ministry in this house. And, and not only... Have they been ordained? They are able preachers of the gospel. And we're proud to have had a hand in that. Amen? Amen. And so we rejoice with them and just bless God for them. And today, I'm going to get out the way and just, just bring you one of our own, Minister Sherry Holt Campbell. Amen? Please receive her at this time. is truly worthy of all of our praises. Amen? Amen. So let's get our Bibles as we get into our lesson, but we want to do our confession of our faith today. Amen? Amen. Repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. This book calls me an overcomer, and that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, as I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this day, God and all that you have stored for us today, God. But God, we ask that I decrease and that your word explodes unto the scene, God. God, we thank you for your seat at the table. We thank you for the word that you put down in us, God, that it is an encouragement to someone today. And we bless your holy name. Amen. Amen. So today, our lesson 
is simply entitled Hark, H-A-R-K. The subtitle is, What Are You Listening To? So the word hark is an old-fashioned archaic word, and people don't say that word very much anymore, but it simply means to listen carefully. It means to hear and to listen attentively. So that's going to be very important in our lesson today. In Isaiah 13, 3 through 4, and, and the words will, the scriptures will come up overhead. Uh, we're going to be using the NIV version of the Bible today. So in Isaiah 13, 3 through 4, it says, I have commanded those I have prepared for battle. I have summoned my warriors to carry out my wrath, those who rejoice in my trumpet. Listen, a noise on the mountains like a great multitude. Other versions use the word tumblet, T-U-M-L-U-T, which means the great noise. It says, listen, an uproar among the kingdoms like the nations massing together. The Lord Almighty is mustering up an army for war. So we'll find that word timblet, we'll find the word sound in the scriptures as we go along. But sound is caused by vibrations, and it travels through the air or any other medium, and it reaches the person's ear or the animal's ear that is listening. So when one is listening, several things have to occur when you're listening. You first receive the message that you hear. You understand and you interpret that in your mind. You evaluate it and then you respond. So today, that is going to be a very important thing that we receive, that we understand, evaluate, and then I'm going to add this, respond appropriately. Amen? There are some sounds that you can hear with your natural ear, and there are other sounds that you cannot hear, but you can hear it as a spiritual wave. And those are sounds that we hear inside of us sometimes. Sounds have different variances. There's a sound of trouble. There's a sound that somebody is in sorrow. There's a sound of pain, a sound of joy, a sound of thanksgiving. And there's a sound of worship, which I love. There's also a sound of victory. The universe revolves around sound. You can't get away from sound. There are vibrations around us all the time. You hear those, those, those sounds subconsciously as well as consciously. You take it in constantly and you never know what you're hearing because it surrounds us. Now in Joshua, we're going to take a look, uh, look at what happened um, when people got together and created the sound. We're going to listen for the sound effects that this had. And I'm going to give you a little bit of background. As everybody knows, the children of Israel is my favorite topic <laughs> for some reason. So we're going to talk a little bit about the children of Israel today. So Moses had been the leader of the children of Israel when they left Egypt. And they're going to be at the Jordan River this time around in this particular story for the second time. And they didn't cross over to the river. So now we all know the story how the children of Israel wandered in the desert for 40 years on a journey that should have only taken them three days. All of the original group that had come from Egypt was now in the desert, and they had died off. So now we're looking at the children of the original people that had left Egypt under Moses. There were only two people who remained of the original group, and that was Caleb and that was Joshua. Moses never made it over Jordan into the promised land. So after Moses' death, Joshua became the leader of the children of Israel. Joshua and Caleb was also part of the original spies who had crossed the Jordan to go over to spy out the land. Moses had sent them over, and so everybody goes over and they see something different and they come back. So the children of Israel never crossed over into Jordan. Now Moses, as we know, had many encounters with God on the mountaintop in the form of the burning bush. And at some point in our relationship with Christ, we have encounters with God too. And I'll tell you a short story. Once I was going for a job interview, and I went into this, this company, and they had 12-foot tall wooden doors. And it took some effort to open up these doors. So I pulled this door, and it was very tough, walked into the vestibule, and all of a sudden, I felt a gust of wind behind me. 
And I'm like, oh, look, I look on the ground and there's leaves blowing around. And then I heard this voice that said, you got the job. And I'm thinking, who knows that I'm going for a job? So I heard this and then I quickly evaluated. Nobody knows I'm coming here for a job interview. So I look over my shoulder to see who this voice was. Didn't see anybody. I turned completely around thinking I may have missed somebody that walked past me. There was no one there. Long story short, 20 minutes into the interview, the interviewer said, you got the job, when can you start? And it caught me so off guard, I didn't even hear what she had said. She had to repeat it. You got the job, when can you start? That was an encounter with God that I had. So Joshua didn't have the same identical encounter with God as Moses did, but he had an encounter. We're going to go to Joshua 5 and 13. So just remember, now we are in the land of Canaan, and the children of Israel have crossed over the Jordan. And this, is, this verse is going to tell us where we're going in our story today. And it reads, now when Joshua was near Jericho, that's where we're headed, he looked up and he saw a man standing in front of him with a sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went up to him and asked, are you for, our, are you for us or for our enemy? Neither, he replied. But as the commander of the army of the Lord, I now have come. Then Joshua fell down to the ground in reverence and asked him, What message does my Lord have for his servant? And the commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. So now let's back this up and take a look at it. So Joshua saw this man and he was talking to him and he asked the question, and the, the man replied. So Joshua asked the question. He listened for the response. And he understood this man to be the commander of the Lord's army. Joshua had an immediate response. He fell down on the ground to his face. So he listened, he evaluated, and he had a proper response immediately. And this is what we have to do sometimes. So Joshua had an immediate response. Now let's go to Joshua 3 and 9, and it says, Come and listen to the words of the Lord, your God. So this is very important as we go along in our story. Joshua wasn't on the mountaintop like Moses. He was in Canaan, the land of promise. And the ground that he was on, that Canaan land, was holy ground because God had blessed it and given it to the children of Israel. In Joshua 4 and 13, we find an accounting of the army that came across the Jordan with Joshua. It says about 40,000 armed for battle crossed over the Jordan before the Lord to the plains of Jericho. 40,000 Israelites ready for war. Keep that number in mind, 40,000. Now there was a lot of things that happened between the time the children of Israel left Egypt and before they attacked Jericho. Now Jericho was the first city that the children of Israel had attacked. Up until that point, they had been invading the land and conquering the land. And when you invade a land, you have to depose the inhabitants of that land. Mm -hmm. So they had been doing great feats, and people started to hear about the encounters that the children of, of Israel had. So now in Joshua 5 and 1, it says, Now when the Amorite kings west of the Jordan and all of the Canaanite kings along the coast had heard how the Lord had dried up the Jordan before the Israelites until they had crossed over. Their hearts melted in fear, and they longer had the courage to face the Israelites. The Israel's Israelites were like a gang. They had a reputation that preceded them. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to Jericho. Jericho is in the city of, uh, the story of Jericho is in Joshua 6 and 1. It says, now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites, and no one went out and no one went in. So I need for you to use your imagination. I call it your mind's eye. This is how the city of Jericho was built. They had walls that were 13 feet high. Mm -hmm. And on top of that wall was a slope, and it was at a 35-degree angle, and it was made of nothing but stone. Then there was brick on top of that. And on the inside of the wall was another brick wall inside of Jericho. And then to add to that, there was a 28-feet tower 
watchtower that stood within the walls of Jericho. So this was a massive wall that went around the city. So I have to give you a little bit more history before we get into Jericho. There was one person who had also heard about the defeats of the children of Israel. And this person listened, understood, evaluated, and responded appropriately. And this person's name was Rahab, and they described her as the harlot. So the story of Rahab became, well, let's look at the story of Rahab, and we'll just look at it very shortly, a short period of time. But if you want to read about that, she is in chapter 2 of Joshua. Rahab had heard about the children of Israel. What has she been listening to? Who has she been listening to? Her home was particularly situated right at the gate of Jericho. So it was an important location. Her house was actually part of the wall, and she had a business. She was a businesswoman, and it was a tavern, but the Bible described her as a harlot. So when the spies went to Jericho to spy out the city, they stopped into the tavern. Now, whether they stopped there to attempt to blend in, they stopped at the tavern. And right away, Rahab knew exactly who they were. The kings also knew that because of the location of Rahab's business, that anybody that went in or out probably stopped there too. And I remember the kings also heard about the defeats of the Israelites, and they knew they were coming their direction. So the kings sent out soldiers to collect the spies and to bring them back. So Rahab hid the spies on her rooftop away from the soldiers. Not only did she hide the spies, when the soldiers came to look for them, she sent the, spy, the, the soldiers a different direction than where the spies actually had went. They hadn't gone anywhere. They were hiding on her rooftop. So now she goes over to the spies and she says, now I have saved you and showed you kindness can I have kindness back? So remember, she's a businesswoman. She's always looking for opportunities because that's what business people do. They look for opportunities. She knew because of their reputation that they were there to spy out the land because they were coming to take it and they were going to destroy the city of Jericho. And she didn't want to be part of that group. So she said to them, I would like that you would spare my father and my mother, my sister and my brothers and all that I have Spare us from death, because I have showed you kindness. And so this is the contract that she had, and the spies said, we will do that, but you cannot tell anyone what our plan is. And she agreed to that. So in exchange for not telling the plan that Jericho was going to be destroyed, she entered this agreement with the spies. So eventually the spies left her home by a window, because remember, her home is built right into the wall, and they left by a red rope that hung outside the window. And they told her that you can hang this rope outside your window, put all of your inhabitants and what you have in the house, and stay in the house, and we will know not to destroy your house. Now, Rahab gave instructions to the spy. They listened, understood, and replied immediately. She told them to go into the mountains and stay three days, and hide because normally the soldiers would go out looking for someone after three days if they couldn't find you they would return so she says stay in the mountains for three days and then you can come back or you could go back to your camp so this was the deal the family had to stay in the house and not come out and then there was a scarlet rope that hung out the window there's a message in this last part of this story and it's simple it's stay in the house because yeah. inside the house, yeah. the Lord is, there is protection inside of the house. Yeah. Yeah. Outside of the house, there's destruction, there's death, bloodshed, and loss. So if you stay in the house, you're covered. If you want to be saved, you'll stay in the house. But that's a message for another day, but I thought I would just bring that up. <laughs> wow. yeah. So you know, Rahab stayed with the Israelis after Jericho was destroyed. And she married a man named Salmon, S-A-L-M-O-N, and they had a son. And their son name was Boaz, who took a wife by the name of Ruth. Rahab was the great-great-grandmother of King David. So now she is in the lineage of Jesus just because she stayed in the house. Yeah. So yeah. she was now in this bloodline. And, you know, Joseph, Jesus' father, he was of the house of David. So she was in direct line. 
in that bloodline because she stayed in the house. So now we're going to Joshua 6 and 1, 1 through 5 in the New King James Version. And we're going to look at the instructions for taking over Jericho. It says, now Jericho was, secu was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given you Jericho into your hand to the king and the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all you men of war, and you shall go around the city once. You should do this for six days. And the spies, I'm sorry, and the seven priests and seven trumpets of ram horns before the ark of the Lord. So they want, he wants seven priests blowing seven horns as well as the ark of the covenant to be marching around the city. It says, but the seventh day you should march around the city seven times and the priests shall blow the trumpets. And it shall come to pass when they make a long blast when the ram, with the ram's horn, and when you hear the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout. Then the walls of the city will fall flat down, and all the people shall go up, every man straight before him. Strap down to verse 10. It says, Now Joshua had commanded the people, saying, You shall not shout or make any noise with your voice, nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth. In other words, shut up and don't say a word. Yeah. It says, until the day that I tell you to shout, then you shall shout. So imagine, remember, there are 40,000 armed men marching around this city, and none of them can open their mouth. None of them can make a noise, because this is the commandment of the Lord for them to take the city. So it came to pass on the seventh day, that they rose early about the dawning of the day and marched around the city seven times in the same manner. And on that day, only they marched around the city seven times. And the seventh time it happened. When the priests blew the trumpets, then Joshua said to the people, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. That was their clue. So are you getting the theme here? They were listening to what Joshua said. They understood what Joshua had said. They evaluated it, and they gave the proper response at the proper time. Mm -hmm. So what we can get for this is that if we listen to the word of the Lord, evaluate it, understand what he's saying, and respond appropriately by being obedient, we will get the victory. Amen? Amen. Vibrations of the wall cause the wall to fall flat. This is when they open their mouths because nothing happens until what? Something is said. And it had to be said at the appropriate moment. Yeah. What are yeah. you listening to? We celebrate this season today in the babe in the manger because others listened, understood, gave the appropriate response. In Luke 1, 26 through 32, we find Mary listened to the angel Gabriel. And Gabriel told her, do not be afraid. Then that she would have a son that she was to name Jesus. The angel Gabriel also told her that he would be great and he would be called the son of the most high God. He told her how she was highly favored with the Lord. And her reply was, behold, the maidservant of the Lord. Let me be according to the word. She listened. She understood. She evaluated as she properly responded. We want to look at the three wise men. They also listen, and they responded, and that is in Luke 2, 8 through 14. The, there were shepherds in the field, and I'll read that one for you. It says, and there were shepherds living out in the field nearby, keeping watch over their flock at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this is a sign to you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly, the great company of heavenly hosts appeared the angels praising God, saying, 
Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those to whom, find, whom his favor rests. When the angels had left and had gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. And he hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. So the three wise men listened, responded appropriately by going to find this, this child. Not only did the wise men were listening, the king, Herod, also had heard about this too. Yeah. So there's always two sides to the story, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So Herod had also heard about this king, and he wanted to preserve who he was, and there was no other king that was going to come and take his job away from him. So Herod wanted the wise men to go and find the babe and then to come back and tell him where this child was. And he said, I want to worship this child too, but that was not his intent. His intent was to kill this child. But the angels warned the shepherds in a dream that once they found the child, that they were not to go back to Herod, that they were to go to their home a different route. Again, the wise men listened, understood, and responded appropriately. They went home a different route, never telling Herod where the, wise, where the, the child was born and where he was located. Joseph, the father of Jesus, or to Jesus, also listened to the angels. And the angels talked to him three times on three separate occasions. In Matthew 1, 20 through 25, an angel came to Joseph and said to him, Do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, and she will bring forth a son and was to call his name Jesus, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated, God is with us. The second time the angel came to Joseph and he listened, and said an angel appeared to him while sleeping and told Joseph, get up and go and take Mary and the babe and flee to Egypt to escape the anger of Herod of Judea. He took Mary and the child during the night. Joseph listened, he understood, he evaluated, and he responded appropriately because he didn't sleep the rest of the night. He got up that night and he took them to yeah, Egypt, yeah, yeah. saving their lives. Third time the angel spoke to Joseph. It says an angel appeared to him to tell him that it was safe to return because King Herod was dead. Now, don't go back to Jerusalem, the angel told him, but instead make a home in Nazareth. Joseph did that, for we know for the story that he was back in Nazareth, and that's where Jesus grew up. Jesus told his disciples, go to Jerusalem and wait until they receive power from on high. 120 people were in the upper room. Yes. And in Acts 2, we find the account that says, and suddenly yes. there came a sound. I told you about that sound. There came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in tongue and other tongues as the Spirit of God gave utterance because they obeyed. They listened, they responded appropriately, and look at what the outcome was. As I close, I leave this with you today. There's a new sound that's coming. Wow. Hearken your ears. Yeah. Oh, come, let us adore him, for he desires and deserves our praises. He desires and deserves all the glory. What are you listening to? And it shall come to pass in the last day, says the Lord, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall, be, shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Verse 21 says, And it came to pass that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So this babe that we celebrate today is our Savior. He's the Savior of the world. And he has come to save you. All we need to do is listen, understand, evaluate, and respond appropriately. The sounds of the church, the praises of the church, will cause the proper vibrations that will bring down any wall. Whether it's a mental wall, 
whether it's a physical wall of healing, whether it's a financial wall, whatever that wall is, when the church gets together and creates that sound, it is capable of bringing down any wall that exists. The Lord is coming after us, and he's going to take down every wall that stands between you and him. And in the end, we win. We know because we obey. We have the victory. There's a new sound that's coming. What are you listening to? Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death of the cross. Therefore, God also exalted him and given him the name which is above all names, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and those under the earth and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Glory to the Father. He's worthy of our praise. He is our worthy Savior. He is worthy of glory and honor. What are you listening to today? Blessings to you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hark. What are you listening to? And that word hark calls your attention to the sound. And I want to say this, that while you were talking, Sherry, and those of you that are listening in, this word came to me about how God, before you ever die in the Lord, God sends a sound after you. And John wrote it and he said, I heard a voice from heaven saying, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. They do rest from their labor and their works do follow him. He said that before anybody that's in the Lord lays down, they're blessed. I'm, I'm calling from heaven and saying they're blessed. So sound will be with us all the way through. And then when we get to heaven, there'll be a sound that the angels couldn't even make. It's the sound of the redeemed. The ones that Jesus saved. And this sound will trump or it will, it will be better than the song that the angels have sung for ages. Hallelujah, glory. <laughs> but when you get there, God is waiting to hear the sound from you. Jesus, my Savior. Jesus, my Lord. So before it even happens, before you ever die, he said they're already blessed. For their works do follow them. I love that word. Listen, understand, evaluate, and respond appropriately. Yes. Listen, evaluate, understand, and respond appropriately. Amen. Because the devil is going to do three of the four. He's going to listen. He's going to evaluate. He's going to understand. Come on, don't think he misses it. He understands. But he's not going to respond appropriately. Because once he knows what God is after, he's going to pervert it. So do like Rahab. First of all, shut up and stay in the house. (laughs) 
I thought about my mom. I mean, times she would tell her, get in the house. When something was happening, she just, she didn't want us to be a part of it. Get in the house. But mom, get in the house. Shut up. Get in the house. Sometimes that's what God is calling you unto, is to come in under safety. Because the enemy is coming. And they're coming to destroy. He's sending something to destroy. Come in. So if you've been listening to this message and you, you're in this house. Here is a voice of a call that says. Give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Recommit your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he loves you. The Bible says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. When you read the Bible, it's the voice of God speaking. So if you're in this room or you're in our, our listening audience, you can say this confession after me. Father, in Jesus' name, I repent of sin. And I give you my life. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Today, Jesus, I believe in a miracle. I believe that you died on a cross. And three days later, you were raised from the dead to the glory of God. And with that confession... And with that faith, I am saved. Thank you for coming into my heart. And if you prayed that prayer, you are into the kingdom. You need to find a good local church to be a part of. We are right at military and a ratio or a church in your area. Find where the word is going forth. There's good worship and you receive and you are fed. How do you know you're fed? When you leave out, you know you got something. Beside a good feeling, you know in your soul that you were exhorted, that you were transformed. If you are here today in this house and you receive something and you want to make a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ today. And you, and you said that confession to me, even if it's to be restored back to the kingdom of God, just slip up a hand. Pastor, that's me today. That's me today. We're not going to ask you to do anything other than pray for you. Give you some good information about the decision you made today. Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Let's thank God for the woman of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. To all of our viewers, we thank God for you and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website, dovechurch.org forward slash giving, which will take you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.